everybody. It's Anne. I'm here. I'm back. I'm doing a collaboration na, 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 with the Foxy Five. We decided we were going to do something that includes beauty through the ages. I wonder if you can figure out which decade I picked. Don't be too sure. You might be right. You might be wrong. No telling. Anyway, I'll give you a hint. It's the 70s. I took the 70s. Because I lived through them. I started off the, my high school in the 70s. And I graduated in 76. I got married the first time in the 70s. And unmarried the first time in the 70s. So, get ready for it. Here it comes. Hey, hello, this is the naked face, the moisturizer, all that lovely stuff. Now, some of this information you would have already gotten in the intro. But I'm a 70s kid when it comes to some things. I graduated high school in 1976. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, bicentennial. Mm. But. I was right there while things were starting to shift from the extreme flower power of the 60s into the early 70s. I was just starting to do makeup more often because my parents didn't object so much once I got into intermediate and high school. They didn't like it a lot, but they didn't object too much. And they weren't too worried about it because during that time period, the way the makeup was being done, the depth of the makeup and that kind of thing was was very light. You didn't get a lot of the, you know, wild psychedelic stuff you were still doing a lot of the flower child natural natural colors only you weren't necessarily painting flowers on your mug that was mostly still if you were going to a music festival now i, I went through a lot of transitions in the 70s graduating high school going from fairly normal, everyday average teenager to being married the first time, and then getting unmarried the first time, and being rather radical by the time I got to the end of the 70s. It was a pretty interesting time period. But we're going to start with the early days. So I've got my eye base on. And what I'm going to do, I'm grab one of my little brushes here. Come here, little round, there's a little round brush. And I'm going to take some pale pinks and do a little, because they, they were very much into still doing more of a natural look at the beginning of the 70s. Now, I'm not going to get real specific with how I place this because they really didn't do very much correcting for eye shape and that kind of thing, unless you were a pro. So it was kind of, besides, I was just starting to learn this stuff way back during this. My favorite thing that I got in trouble for was this kind of pale denim blue eyeshadow and I can't remember who made it but it's this pale denim blue eyeshadow it was just so much fun it really was it was so much fun and it was so pretty and it went with all of the blue jeans stuff and yes I was one of those crazy people that got the humongous bell bottoms and sewed little silver bells all the way around the hem okay 
made my parents crazy, made the schools crazy, but we did it anyhow. And, oh my God, if you were watching people going down the halls at school with these bell bottoms on, because that was right about the time they finally got over themselves with the, you know, the girls have to wear skirts thing. The bell bottoms would be slapping each other as you're passing in the hall. When you've got something like a 36 inch bell, you know, a full yard of fabric flapping around your ankles, you got some fabric lock going up and down them halls. It's worse, it, it's almost as bad as having hoop skirts, I swear. It was it, hoop skirts and crawlins, it would have been the same problem. start with a little bit brighter paint. Not very bright, just a little. And then we'll get down to the bottom edge where I put a little bit more. Like I said, I was just starting. I didn't know diddly squat about putting eyeshadow on other than if I had three colors in the pan, obviously I, you know, a little one of those little three color compacts. If I had three colors, I had to use them. Just ask me. I had to use them. Now, my grandma made my mom crazy because my grandma was one of them must have the Avon ladies. And she would buy me makeup despite my mother. Because my grandma believed that women should wear makeup to look good. And my mom was just not that big into it. But then my grandmother worked at a relatively high class department store. And she did shoe fitting. And the shoe fitting she did was for corrective shoes for kids. But since it was Woodward and Lothrop, in case anybody remembers that one. In our case, it was in Old Town Alexandria, Virginia. Everybody called it Woody's for sure. My grandmother worked there long enough to get all kinds of awards and pins and all that kind of stuff for being there forever. And the uniform of the day for that store was a black dress with a white lace collar or a black dress with a handmade lace collar, you know, them crochet collars like Judge Judy wears, yeah, or a black dress and a single strand of white pearls. That was uniform of the day for that store. And you had to wear dress shoes. They didn't care you were on your feet all day. Wasn't a big thing for them. Now, see, I did that all with this one brush. It's all basically within the eye socket. There's nothing really sticking out anywhere. And at the time that I was doing this kind of color setup, that was the way it was meant to be. Just ask anybody. They will tell you. You did not go outside of that line. Now, the other thing is, you would use either black or brown for your eyeliner, and it was usually a pencil. Now, and it wasn't the gel pencils either. You use things like coal in the pencil, that kind of thing. You didn't play around with this. It was very simple stuff. And my black pencil, the black coal pencil seems to have run to the bottom and disappeared. Let me see. Yep, it's taken a runner. Dee 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 dee, taken a runner. Dove for the bottom and hidden.
I'm going to stay hidden, apparently. Anyway. But basically, well, there's one. But basically, you didn't do a lot of lining on. You'd use either a brown or a black. I tended to prefer the brown because you see how pale this hair is currently? This is what's left of the bleach out that I did so I could do the pink for summer. And it's pretty close at this point to what my hair color was like when I was in high school. I started off absolutely white haired as a baby and it got progressively darker. My hair hasn't been hard like this pretty much since like mid 90s so and then it didn't stay there long never did stay there long but I would get my little brown pencil since it was closer to my hair tone and I preferred brown mascara where I could find it because my lashes are kind of a pale color which doesn't help with trying to see them and I would just do a very basic line and sometimes it was just as messy as this one because I was already in glasses back then and could not see what the heck I was doing so put my little basic line on And for some reason, mascara bothered my mother more than anything. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just don't. So, I would get my little mascara out. And occasionally, I could still find the um, little pan mascara with a separate brush that you had to put a little bit of water in to get it to work. And I used that for years. I actually love it. I miss it. And I would just barely tap my lashes enough so they were a little more visible because, again, these were fairly pale along with my hair. But I'm not going to do my eyebrows because I didn't. I didn't get that part. I didn't understand that part. And I'm going, well, you know, my eyebrows are pale, my hair is pale. I thought that was how it was supposed to be. So I'd have my little eye eyelashes on, just like that. Couldn't put too much on if you put too much on, mom have cow. Mom would have her cow. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And we're back. Now, I don't have any of the jewelry that I used to have. Don't have any of it left. This is as close as my current collection has. Yes, I had my beads. I had my love beads. It was all good. And then, I had, depending on what I could get away with that day, I had several different versions of pale pink lipstick. Now, pale pink the real pale pink that I used to use was called Pink Frost. And it was so pale that it didn't really show up. It's kind of like this is one of the um, soft lips tinted lip conditioner in a pearl.
And that literally is the same color I used to use. The problem is you can't really see anything, which kind of kills it. But it had that frost to it. I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera at this point. I won't know until I go to edit. However, if I could get away with it, I had something that's just a little bit darker. It's a little closer to the eyeshadow. Kind of had a little bit of an orange to it so that it actually showed up a little better. I could mostly get away with that one. Mostly. There was no bronzer in my life. It didn't exist. The closest I could get away with anything was something like this. This is an e.l.f. blush. And it's just called blushing. Just a pale baby pink. And if I was doing this, this is the closest color I have. This one has sparkle in it. If I had sparkle on my cheeks when I went out, I'd have red patches on the other cheeks. But this is the closest color I have. Yes, I'm putting this right on the bare skin. Because that's what I would have done. I didn't do foundation. Mom thought well, that was too much. I'd get a little blush. And I'd put my little blush on. And on and on and on. And I would go off skipping down the road just as happy as if I had good sense. It's cute. But that's what it is. It's cute. And yes, I'll, I, I might have a little concealer. Some of that clear little split cream, you know. To cover up any bump of it. But literally, this was it. It's cute. This little shirt, if I could get it to sit properly, we'll sit down and do that little peasant shirt thing, but it wants to argue. And I would go out with my little beanie on, my little beret, and my center parted hair. Now at the time the hair came all the way down here. And then we got into the later 70s. Things started to change. A lot. We went from surfer songs and still keeping a lot of the first rock stuff that came out of the 60s and we started getting weird. We really did. We started getting really weird. And the hair changed. The hair changed a lot. We had all manner of stuff going on. We had slick stuff that showed up at the clubs with lots of glittery, glittery, glittery jewelry. Loads of flash. And we started heading into some of the original smoky eyes that were kind of going back 
to the black and white movies because it was the day of disco. The rhinestones. And the flash music at the clubs. And the glitter ball for the dance floor. And the hair that was so different starting to go towards a little more of the avant-garde. Just a bit. We had people who curled their hair and boofed it up. Some fierce. And some that just started doing kind of a little bit different. A little shaggy. Just a tiny. Nothing big. You had to start somewhere. And you could really, really start that glam process based on what you were doing earlier. You really could. Take your lovely pinks that you started out with and play with them. Pick up a little something. Darken that corner out and start pulling that corner up. Start heading for the cats. After all, this was going out to the club. This was the days of disco. And you could get a little more radical with what you were doing. Think about all those disco queens that sang all of their lovely songs and all the glitter they wore and the intense colors if you don't know what I'm talking about take your ass and go look up Saturday Night Fever and watch the strut and watch the colors and watch this get started Just a bit more glam. Just a bit. More glitter. Roll the glam cam. Get those shadows gleaming. Get them going. Now, with that addition, now you could start putting the lower lash lines on. those lower lashes. Make them show. You can get a lot more frisky with your upper lashes. You want them? Put yourself on some false lashes. Get yourself some false lashes and really go for broke. Put your eyebrows on. Now, 
Oh, never mind the pale pink stuff on your cheeks and the lack of foundation. Now, at this point, I was still using a powder foundation as opposed to liquids. And I kept using powder foundations through most of the 70s, even when I got the most radical. And I still wasn't using contour. Contour was not my thing. I never knew it was even a thing to start with. However, my blushes got a bit more intense. But still rather natural looking. Right here. They weren't standing out. They weren't blinding. However, that is when I discovered this wonderful substance that would glitter and was just the thing going out. And of course, they're hiding now. All right, where did you all go, you silly buffins? this particular type of glitter that I've got here is basically just kind of chunky glitter in a gel base. We would get glitter in a little Vaseline and start this so that the lights at the club would hit your face and shine back. And that's basically all this is. It's sort of a gel with a little glitter. But if you were going out to go dancing, you needed glitter. It was a thing. This must be done. And I'm dropping stuff everywhere. Last, but not least, by any means, not least, when we're talking about the 70s. And this is where I really went wild. This was my wild child move. Punk baby. Take me to your punk. What I've got to use right now, this is from a Halloween set. But your face needed to be pale. 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 And there needed to occasionally be little 
darken in places to make you look a bit more gaunt. But pale. Pale was him. Pale was the thing. Pale was the scene. Your hair had to be radical. Your face had to be radical. Your makeup became radical. The glitter was no longer your point. Glitter was no longer where you were going. Wire and chain and all manner of things that did not fit the establishment. Gotta remember which ear I made this one for. Dog chains, early safety pins. Things that just were totally different. You didn't want to look like the usual, the regulars, the everyday, the conformist. You did stuff that you thought made you look as non-conformist as you could manage. Which is where the piercing the face thing came in. I never could get into the piercing the face. And I couldn't quite make it to putting safety pins through my ears. I just couldn't quite get there. This was as close as I got. Earrings with safety pins and chains on them. I didn't go all the way into that kind of piercing. I just didn't. It just wasn't the thing. But darker colors in the makeup, oh yeah, you bet. Way darker. I got way all kinds of manner out into the left field with that. Off we would go to listen to the punk bands with our grungy colors and harsh lines.
and the blusher was laid on it looked like a big stripe. And nothing, nothing on the other ones. You just wanted a big spot because then they could see the variance between your cheeks and the pale color you put on your skin and the other darks stood out with it and before you go out the door you put your topper on whatever lipstick you could find with the most bang for the buck but it had to be dark dark Now, the goths went way paler. They really did. They went way paler. And used a lot more solid black. I never got in with the goths as much. It wasn't really my thing. I didn't need to be a vampire. And let me tell you, most of the fashions they were chasing, they were really hard to find for pudgy women at the time. Because everybody was doing the tight waist Victorian stuff. They've gotten better over the years with having it available. But not perfect. Anyone go, anybody want to go to a party? Know of a good rave? Because this will translate. Now it's going to take me forever to wash my face off. It really is. The thing is, though, the 70s, even with all of the changes and all of the strange versions of how to do makeup and it got stranger the farther we got it was still artistry it was still a way to show people who you were everybody had their look they had looks that they would do repeatedly because it became their calling card you would know their look as well as you knew their name, whichever one they gave you. So yeah, the 70s. Yeah, I had make I had lipstick on my tooth. Imagine that with this color. Yeah, that's better. But imagine being a flower child in the early 70s. And then your nickname changes from Moonchild. To Moonlight Sparkle. To eventually something like Dark Moon. The 70s had a lot of beauty in it, but it also had a lot of statements in it. I grew up with the Vietnam War 
on the evening news. Damn near every bloody night. Tom Brokaw was still in the Vietnam fields with the soldiers. I had just started high school when Watergate got going. My daily social studies was Richard Nixon and Watergate. Look where I am today. I was a resistor then. I'm still resisting that kind of power grab. So yeah, I'm 61. And I still have my hawk. And in a little while, it's going to have a new color. Because I like it to stand out. No, I did not glue it up this time. Do you know how long it takes to glue your hair up? <laughs> Let me tell you. That is a chore. Besides, I'm not really going to a party or anything anytime soon. Which is too bad. Tell me what you think. Yes, really. Tell me what you think. I mean, you've seen three different phases of the 70s here. So tell me what you think. What do you remember? What part of the 70s, if you were there, stands out for you? What 70s look would you actually be willing to put on and not just for Halloween what kind of calling card does your makeup leave who do you show people that you are Go do something fun. Go wreck your, your makeup station and go crazy. Play with the colors. See who you show yourself you are. 